All right. I've done liverwurst three different recipes, kind of the same. Added a little bit to each one until I came with what I feel is the right recipe. Matter of fact, let me get it out so you can actually see it. All right. So these are the beans. They're supposed to be non-GMO. It doesn't say it on the can. It said it on the website. I'm going to show you sometimes the trick of it. I, I looked everywhere. I didn't see it anywhere on the can anywhere. Um, so they're supposed to be non-GMO organic. I'll show you on the internet. So here's some honey mustard, some vegan mayo that I'm going to uh, top it with. Um, now these are new to me. Um, I had bought that one one time. These are just new. These are excellent. Now I normally wouldn't buy anything like this because you can't recycle the bag. Um, the late July chips that can be recycled through sending them back to the company, or not the company, but a, um, I forget the name of it. Uh, like on the back of the bag, it would say, one, one company is like how to recycle, I think, but it's not that. Anyway, TerraCycle, Terra, TerraCycle, Terra Recycle, something like that maybe. So anyway, they were out of stock on all the July, um, late July products. So normally I would use that, like a tortilla chip or a mixed chip or something. So I bought this this time around. I could have made my own bread, but I had pizzas and veggie sandwiches and stuff for the past week on and off. So I didn't want to eat more bread again. So I sank this time around to buy something that's not recyclable um, just to get a little bit of break from, from bread. And I do make my own homemade bread um, on a flat bread on the uh, stove top, which is real simple. And I can use it for pizzas, for my side dish with a salad or soup, or I can fold it up and eat it with a veggie sandwich. So that's really good and quick and easy instead of making loaf bread. Um, there's some of this uh, black pepper that weird non-GMO label, if it focuses, it might not focus. And um, I had to buy that sea salt because they were out of the good kind. Um, so I bought that. And then some organic non-GMO organic uh, ginger. And that's what you put in it along with this. So if you're a lover of Braunschweiger liverwurst in that yellow and sort of reddish package that's like a log and it's mush, looks exactly like this. I mean exactly like that um, then you'll love this so what you do is throw this in a food processor um, use two cans of beans and that amounts to this I don't know how many cups this is but it's relatively small you know but obviously it will it, it make a lot for our family to have dip you can see that's what two four six seven eight nine ten of those chips and I basically got nothing out of there so you put the beans in and what you're going to do, make sure you drain them, drain the beans. Um, you're going to add your salt, your pepper. Oh, I don't have the olive oil out, but here it is right here. You're going to add just a little bit of olive oil, like maybe a half a teaspoon um, to a teaspoon. Uh, excuse me, half a tablespoon to a tablespoon. Um, that's it. The rest of the stuff, the sage, the ginger, the salt and pepper, is to taste. Now, the ginger, I would say probably about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon that's all you need on the ginger it's not going to be a ginger taste but for whatever reason after making this three or four times the ginger seems to be a key to bring it all together to make that liverwurst taste now the bean the dark kidney beans work excellent and then this is the secret ingredient that really kicks it up but don't start off with a lot because you don't want it just to be like a sage dip you just want it to get the sage flavor with the ginger, the olive oil, and the salt and pepper, and it will bring it into a true liverwurst flavor. It really, really will. It's that simple. Um, so just go light, like break maybe two of the leaves off, and um, you know rip them in half and throw them in your food processor, and blend it all up with the rest of that I told you, and then you'll decide what taste you want. If you think it needs a little more sage, then add like another half a leaf or a leaf until you get it to where you want. The same thing with the salt and the pepper. The ginger and the olive oil, I would say half a tablespoon to a tablespoon of olive oil. And um, maybe on the ginger, a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. That's it. You're never going to have to go more than that. And no water, no nothing. You just blend it up to like a nice whippy thick consistency that you can easily spread on there. So what do I do? I have some mustard on there, some celery, 
and um, some red onion. This one is the vegan mayonnaise, a little gnat. Um, so the celery and the onion are organic. Um, the chips, you know, I don't even know if those chips are, yeah, they are. They're non-GMO and stuff like that. Like I said, I wouldn't recommend buying them. Um, if my sting isn't in stock next time for chips when I want chips, then I'm just going to have to go and just use a bread or something and make my own thing. Um, so that's it. It's really that simple. Now you could make this on that flatbread that I said. Uh, you can use this and put some lettuce on it or whatever you eat on the flatbread and the mustard or whatever and the onion and turn it into a sandwich. So let's see the mustard one, how it tastes. awesome it's absolutely amazing before I went vegan 10 years ago I used to love liverwurst although I hadn't had liverwurst in a while because I sort of weaned off of meat anyway when I was down to like fish and stuff and then I had this massive awakening and I just did away with meat and everything the amount of how close that tastes to liverwurst and I I know most people say Liverwurst, mustard, and onion is the way to go, but I kind of like the mayonnaise sometimes. And again, that's a vegan mayonnaise. Everything's vegan here and, and all that. Organic, non-GMO. It is, I mean, if, if I served that tea and put it in a liverwurst container with a seal on it that says liverwurst, I guarantee my father, who loves liverwurst, would never know the difference. Out of all the vegan things I've made, I think this and vegan cheese that I make, you would never be able to tell that it's not the real thing. So if you're using the liverwurst, the secret ingredient, ginger, sage. I think the olive oil pulls some flavor into it as well. And you get yourself the dark kidney beans. And that's it. That's simple. Now, one meal a day I eat non-GMO, organic, recycle, usually only cans and number one plastics. Um, I try to stay away from all bags except the late July. Um, this I shouldn't even bought. Uh, it's a canister cardboard. They're not going to take that in recyclables. They'll take that plastic and glass they take. Uh, one meal a day and grow your own food. So let me show you this real quick and then I'll just show you my growing my own food now. I do have sage but I bought it from the store this time. I'm waiting for mine to grow back. And um, I got some other stuff growing as well. Celery and everything like that. So let me show you what I've been doing for 15 months to get you excited about maybe you know, inspiring you to do the same. All right, so like I said, it's this 15 months that I've been doing this, um, and it's working out good. I harvested about four cucumbers, two good ones, two deformed ones a little bit, and then there's a whole bunch still starting to grow. They're like, I don't know, they're straggling behind. Um, they just popped up, though. It's not like they're not growing. They just started popping up. So there's some cucumbers down there and everything. I have a strawberry field you're going to see. So like, for instance, this strawberry here put out one and which put out another and then another and then another and then another you can see they take up room and when I show you the rest of them that's why I don't have my radishes and their greens growing and um, spinach and, and lettuce because they're taking up so much space um, here is a small mini bell pepper uh, there is some celery growing um, here's some cilantro I just started Brussels sprouts popping up um, this is almost mature now, this oregano. That basil has been cut a few times. And the sage, if you can see the sage in the middle, that's regrowing and down to the left regrowing. Um, and it's still growing upwards. I've taken some, even in the middle, if you see in the middle to the, the absolute middle one, where I took most of the leaves and cut the top off, look down in the middle of it. It's regrowing out of the middle there too. So that's why I bought sage, so this can um, regrow itself. Um, yeah, you can do this stuff. It's simple and easy. This whole shelf system is six feet by three feet by 16 inches to give you an idea how wide that is. Pretty good. Like this is probably six inches. That's like seven or eight inches. And you can see the three mediums and then the smaller ones. Um, and it was like, I don't know, total attack, 60 bucks on Walmart to come in three different colors. Six feet high, uh, five adjustable shelves. I bought this on top of that uh, to put on top of that so nothing falls through. The only reason that's empty is because I have all those um, berries growing there right now and I can't switch it up yet because I originally kept it like that and then I just switched it over about two months ago. 
or a month ago, maybe not even. And the lights are GE Grow Lights. Those Grow Lights are excellent, as you can see, from babies. They're actually called From Seed to Fruit and Flower. Um, they're red and blue spectrum, but I like the white. But they are red and blue spectrum because the bright white light is so beautiful compared to like that pinkish or purple haze. Purple haze. Da -na -na, da -na -na -na. Um, so what else? Uh, they're about anywhere from 30 to 50. They had fluctuated, but that's good because most places charge 70 to 80 for them. Uh, they're two feet by about four inches by about three inches. And that's all you need is two feet. So I don't have anything else on right now. And as you can see, the light goes down far here. Now, just to give you an example how well they work, that had flowered already. That's a two-year-old plant, and it's still there. These are on the outskirts, and they're growing. And this big guy here has never been, like, under light. It's just grown right from there. I don't even know what it is, actually, to be honest with you. Um, none of my other flowers, wildflowers, or whatever I bought ever looked like this. So... It just happened to be there and it keeps growing. It's the second year. It's about, I think I measured it last night. In less than a week, in about four days, it went from, if I remember correctly, it was about 72 inches. Now it's about 79 inches. So it grew seven inches in about four days. And it keeps putting out these flowers. Um, I don't know what it is. So that's just to show you that these lights work so awesome that you, they don't even have to be underneath it to grow all that well. All right, let me show you some other stuff. All right, before I go and do that, so I bought these because of this. Um, they were in a, uh, not a 12-pack, a 6-pack. And um, the, the regular beans that I bought were out of stock. And as you can see, it says non-GMO. But nowhere on the packet, on the can or on the box it comes in, says anything about non-GMO, but it says it there. So that's really odd, you know, I don't, I don't really know. Now, the reason I buy it in cans is because a bag of beans, you cannot recycle the bag has to go into garbage or a landfill or the water. So a can I know is going to get recycled, or at least it has the potential to be recycled at my center. All right, so this is a little crowded now. Um, a lot of things are on the floor again because of room. Again, the strawberries are taking up a lot of room and plants that are re still growing from the summertime. So this is a tomato. Now, I'm going to show you three different tomatoes. This one here that's starting to flower all over, it's either a Campari tomato or a grape tomato. Same thing with this. I don't know which one I put in which plant, which it doesn't matter to me. Um, and then the other guy here, those bigger guys, are Roma tomatoes. Okay, now, with the peppers, the mini peppers and the big pepper I'm going to show you, and all these tomatoes, store-bought, non-GMO organic, I ate them and I planted the seeds. I've been doing that outside and inside. Outside for two years, inside for the past 15 months. And as you can see, they grow really, really nice. Um, that is a large bell pepper. The other one I showed you, and I'll show you another one, were the mini bell peppers. And they were orange, red, and yellow. Uh, these will be green, but I let them ripen until they're red. And again, from the store, organic, non-GMO, I eat them and I plant the seeds. And one pepper will give you anywhere from like 20 to like 100 seeds. So you can continuously grow them and grow them. Uh, down in the center, same thing. Um, but not a seed, uh, they call it a seed potato, but I just buy a bag of red organic potatoes. They were about medium size, and I planted them about two, two and a half weeks ago, and uh, you can see they're already growing high. So I sprouted about three of them, and now they're growing there. Um, this is the second time I did potatoes. The first time they never flowered, but I still got a couple potatoes, like maybe four or five potatoes, but they never flowered. It was so weird. Hopefully this time it will work. Um, not sure why they didn't flower. Maybe because... Uh, it wasn't warm enough out in my living room where I was first doing them. Uh, I don't know. Or maybe it was just a little bit, I don't know, coincidence. All right, over here, some more cucumbers. They wrap around the parsley here. Um, I actually just put the parsley in. Now, less than a week ago, this parsley was this tall. This parsley grows so fast. I forget what it's called. It grows up to three feet tall. You should see how, how tall it grows outside. I, I literally, so it was like this guy right here. It was about that tall. Now look at all of it. Wham. Here's some more celery. I replanted it from a pot and it started growing really tall. And then just the cucumbers again over there. Again, this is a little bit not normal because I ran out of room. You're going to see why. All right, so you see all those pots are baby strawberries. I started with six strawberries 15 months ago. I think I'm counting up to 97 or 98. Yep, that's right. From six to 97 or 98. 
This is why. Baby. Two babies. Baby. So they're they're everywhere. So um, I had to buy an extra stand, which you're going to see. And that's why the greens, like the lettuce, spinach, and radishes aren't growing. I just got done eating them and cutting them last month. But I don't have room to start growing them again because I got to get these. I mean, look at this. They're on my floor. Look at how many those little guys. They're all babies. They just keep popping out. And that's in 15 months. So six to almost 100 in 15 months. That's another small pepper. It's already like the big pepper and the other pepper. It's already got um, flowers ready to come out. Now, in fact, I'll show you. So I, I produce strawberries on these. They're supposed to produce uh, summer and fall. But I guess because they're indoors, they're pretty much producing monthly. Now, I don't know if that's normal, but they're pretty much producing monthly. That's what they look like before they start. And the middle of that turns into a strawberry, in case you're not familiar with that. The kids would probably love that kind of stuff. All right, so I set this up in the only spot I had in my house, which I don't mind because it actually fits nice and makes my kitchen slash dining room look pretty nice. So, um, oh, and by the way, you can put on top whatever you want. I put some of my decorative, that's obsidian, uh, serpentine, crystal. So I, you could store stuff up there or add stuff to whatever you want. So here, look at all those strawberries. And then you can see there's babies, 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 babies. Look at all the, anything you see like this, that's babies coming out. I just clipped a couple um, to grow and I got to do this. I got this set up now. So see what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this. I'm going to bury that a little bit and then pat it down. Same thing with this here and it will go in there. And this one's a baby and it grew pretty fast over the last three weeks and it's already producing. So that's a good sign. Um, so yeah. And then down here I got some wild mint. That's all wild mint from a creek out by the mountain. Um, so that's truly organic and non-GMO and it grows like crazy. That was the original after about five years. And when you cut mint, so if I cut one of those stems, you can cut it, clip the leaves off the first um, inch, put it in water and it will start sprouting. And you can start another one and another one and another one. They, all, they, 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 they rarely ever do not root. And so yeah, so you got a ton of mint. And these are just some flowers and some, that's actually a pomegranate, a miniature pomegranate. Here's some rosemary that I moved over here because of the room. And they're going to be some giant lilac bushes. So other than that, there would be like lettuces, uh, radishes, spinaches, and I don't know what else that I normally would do. But right now it's just strawberry haven. So here's an example. So I just did this about two days ago, but it will take up to about a week. They'll start sprouting. Uh, this is the mint. And when they get to about an inch or two long, then you can plant them. And the reason I did that is because I needed some mint. I wanted to put some in a smoothie and um, the best way to do it instead of picking the leaves off is to clip a part of it clip clip down to the ground or off of a vine itself like a winding vine clip one of the branches and use what you need from the bottom and put the bottom in the water and then the water will sprout and now you can do it so what I'll do is I'll keep doing them and then use them as I need them um, like from now on if I need mint I'm gonna use this before I clip another one but if they do grow roots I'll just stick them in the ground in a pot and if, if it's getting closer to warm weather, like right now we're towards the end of March, so I could start putting them in the ground or give them to neighbors or something like that. So keep that in mind. Just remember, use them from the bottom, clip the bottom nice and flat and they'll grow roots. All right, so hope that inspires you. Uh, you can garden and farm in your own house. Now let me tell you this, I live in a second floor two bedroom apartment. So you saw two bedrooms with the shelf, the dining room slash kitchen area is one and then right by my back door. Um, and it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't take up a lot of room or anything and it makes it look nice. And you don't have to use your other lights or anything if you don't want because they're, they're bright enough. And you only need to have them on about, probably about eight to 10 hours max. Sometimes I only go like six to eight hours. And like you saw, you saw how many plants, giant plants, small plants, baby plants, fruit, veggies, whatever it was, they were growing fine. All right, so there's the liverwurst, one meal a day, non-GMO, organic, um, recycle and buy only what you really can recycle, and try to grow your own food and stuff. Maybe you buy one shelf and you start your herbs on one, and maybe some lettuces and greens and radishes. Green, radish greens are great too. Um, what you didn't see right now is green onion, um, green onion, and uh, I don't like. There's a social garlic plant I didn't show you, 
Social garlic is great. It's not as potent. You can eat the stem, the flowers, and the leaves. I love doing the leaves. They're great. Um, raw or sautéed. So you can have your own shelf. You could do the herbs on one shelf. You can do lettuce and stuff. And on the bottom, you make the one thing higher if you want. Um, although you really need only two shelves if you're going to do it. Unless there's mini plants. But you could do like tomatoes, peppers, and um, cucumbers on the bottom if you want. Like one of each to start out. But let me just show you something. So for instance, because I got away with three shells on this um, for the plants that are going to be taller because strawberries barely need any room. So these strawberries were a little bit bigger, so I left a little bit more room. But these strawberries were really small. Matter of fact, what you're seeing isn't the right setup. So these little guys will be here closer to the light, and these guys with the bigger pots will be down there. But because of all the babies going on, I have to keep switching them. But you can have, like, say, your herbs. Um, of course, it would be more like this and you'd have more distance in there. And then you would have um, equal amount of shelves. Like if you wanna do three shelves, you could do like herbs and your lettuces and then more lettuces or cucumbers. But if you want tomatoes, like I showed you, they grow like three feet tall, you're gonna to have to lift this shelf up more, which means you only have two shelves. So whatever you decide to grow, just remember that ahead of time. If you say, I'm gonna put tomatoes and peppers down there like that, well, they can grow two to three feet tall, meaning your next shelf needs space for the lights. So if you're going to grow lettuces or or something like that, just know that you got to have a good distance. You can't have them banged up against the light, but you got to have at least six to eight inches below. You know what I mean? So you might not be able to get away with three things. That's why I have the different shelves because I can layer what I want on them. All right. I just wanted to share that with you just in case you go out and buy one and then you think you're going to go out and you're going to do this, this, and this. And you're like, oh my God, it's too much close together. So pick what you want to do, try it the first time, and you'll get the shelving right. And then you can always buy a second one. Unless you know ahead of time, I'm just going to have two shelves. I'm going to do this there and all the bigger plants on the bottom. All right? All right. So hopefully you got some ideas. This is really excellent and good. Uh, if you're a liverwurst fan, now you got something better than liverwurst because it's better for you. No animals hurt. Uh, better for your... Um, body, mind, and energy, and, and everything, made with beans. If you buy the cans, then you can recycle the cans. The bags, remember, they can't be recycled, so they're going to go in a landfill, so that's not good. So try to live consciously, um, evolve uh, to, to something better on all levels. All right? Lots of love to you all. Bye-bye.